Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you from wherever in the world you are listening in from, and welcome to how to effectively so use social media to dominate your next event, where you are going to discover how to effectively use pre, during, and post event engagement to build buzz, traffic, leads, and sales. We're delighted to have you here. My name is Mark Huber. Today with me here in our virtual studio, I'm honored to have Melanie Dadero. Melanie is an author of the international number one bestseller, The LinkedIn Code. She's also the founder of Top Dog Social Media, a social media agency that helps brands, businesses, professionals, and sales teams use social media marketing and social selling to boost their visibility, attract new customers, and increase their revenue. A social Media Examiner has listed her blog as one of the top 10 social media blogs of 2014, and she has been dubbed by the media and by myself as Canada's number one LinkedIn expert and social media strategist. Uh, Melanie also provides LinkedIn training to corporate sales teams and speaks worldwide at both industry and corporate events and conferences. And as you can tell, Melanie is on the leading edge of what's happening in social media uh, and especially social media marketing. In fact, social media is directly responsible for today's event. I became aware of Melanie through LinkedIn some time ago, and we got to know each other there. And when I reached out uh, to her to see if she'd be up for us getting together for today's event, she readily agreed. Now, the reason for today's interview is simple. Uh, it's to give you, the listener, a clear, actionable ideas, steps, tools, and strategies to help you get your message out in a sincere and meaningful way as you use social media to engage and connect with people in your sphere of influence and business before, during, and after your event. So why is this important? Well, because business is all about people connecting with people, and that's the entire goal of social media, which is to connect on a level where trust is earned, deserved, and rewarded. And the more trust you earn, the more likely people will do business with you and your company. So whether your event is the next trade show on your trade show program, new branding and messaging for your company's products and services, a new product launch, a company website redesign, or introducing a company blog, whatever it is, it is newsworthy, both to you, your clients, and prospective clients. So however you join us here today, consider yourself very lucky to be here and listening to Melanie Zadaro speak on how to effectively use social media to dominate your next event, and you will discover how to use pre, during, and post event engagement to create buzz, traffic, leads, and sales. So whether it's the trends on Twitter, the latest Facebook changes, or connecting with the movers and shakers on LinkedIn, you'll find Melanie's approach both unique and refreshing. So welcome, Melanie. Hi, Mark. So great to be here with you today. Well, we're just delighted to have you here, and uh, the ball is in your court, so to speak. I know we've got about 40 minutes, and you've got a lot to say, so we'll let you uh, get right on with things. Okay. Well, you know, events are one of the greatest uh, things to promote via social media. I, I obviously speak at a lot of events, and each time there's an event, an event, there's, you know, a hashtag, and it gives you the opportunity, especially if we're talking about Twitter, to really engage and interact with anybody that's attending the event. So if there's an event hashtag for the trade show or the event that you're at, make sure that you're using that and paying attention to who's, and this is for you know, pre and, and during events, um, who's engaging with that hashtag. And, and you also should you know, definitely create a hashtag of your own for your company so that you can monitor any discussions if anybody's stopping by. And then, of course, I mean, there's lots of kinds of you know, fun things you can do at the actual event. You can be sharing... Uh, you know, pictures and getting people to post different things and tag themselves in, in posts, uh, contests, all kinds of different things that can really, uh, you know, start to create a buzz. And I think Twitter's, even though I am the LinkedIn expert, <laughs> mm -hmm. Twitter's definitely an amazing tool for doing that. Facebook is a little bit more challenging. You definitely need to be prepared to, you know, spend a little bit of an ad, ad budget uh, to get noticed on that network. It is a little bit more challenging. And of course, on LinkedIn, it's uh, great to be able to access directly to your, your existing contacts, let them know about the event, let them know where you're going. If you see people that are attending that event, you know, make sure you're sending them a note to let them know that you'd love to meet up with them at the event. So there's lots of things you can do. It's really about um, creating a bit of a like a, a bit of a you know a task list of the different things that you want to do pre, post, and uh, and during the event. 
kind of reminds me of a product launch. You know, when I'm doing a product launch for a new product, I, I literally have this mile-long list of all the different deliverables that I need to create, whether it's web pages and opt-in pages and email copy and banners and promotional things to, you know, posting on the different social networks and, you know, all the different things that are available out there. So creating a little handy list of the different things that, you know, you can do is really, really helpful so that you can, you know, delegate some of that um, when you're about to put on an event. It can be very, very time-consuming and draining, so having some resources with some people to help you out with that is definitely, uh, you know, a really great idea. So, Mark, um, why don't you just jump in for a moment and share some of the things that you've seen work uh, with creating buzz at different events, and, and then, of course, any other questions that you have for me, um, dive in with them right after. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity, Melanie. Um, I want to say that uh, being in the uh, industry in which I am, with, to uh, listen to clients' input and vision and um, assist them in bringing that vision uh, to the trade show floor by way of um, a display or a custom-built exhibit. Uh, that is half the battle because um, even though you show up, um, many people, existing clients or prospective clients, uh, may not know that you are there at the trade show. And that's why in today's environment, especially with the um, tools and platforms available, um, namely social media. Uh, it's really, I, I think, important for people to understand and to try and implement um, a, a few strategies to, as you said, uh, capture uh, conversations uh, before an event, um, continuing those conversations during, and then uh, specifically um, feeding those conversations and, and helping uh, audiences uh, after the event, um, all to um, be engaging and to ultimately bring people to your blog or website um, where they can more fully uh, you know, see and recognize the products and, and services that you have to offer. Um, people still need and want face-to-face -face, uh, time with um, businesses and companies that they are thinking of doing business with or, or are doing business with and trade shows are a great uh, venue for that to happen. Anecdotally, I have you know heard stories in the past of people that do spend the, uh, the money um, and often it can be quite substantial money to participate in a, in a trade show and then feel that their time there um, has not being as effective as possible because they didn't get the leads or the uh, the business opportunities as much as they had wanted. And my comments to that uh, have always been, you know, a series of questions. Uh, what did you do before the show, during, and after? And uh, in many cases, they felt, well, for so many years, we've just shown up at this show, um, you know, put up our booth or, um, you know, watched as it was being uh, installed. And, um, you know, then we had our reps and salespeople uh, man the booth. And, um, it, you know, it's just as we have always done. But uh, in today's ever-changing uh, business world, um, you're really doing yourself a disservice uh, if you don't utilize social media. And um, often the show um, a management company will, will give, uh, in broad strokes, um, access to, uh, to social media, the hashtags that you refer to, etc. Um, but that's promoting the show itself. What um, uh, each exhibitor wants to do is create their own uh, hashtag so they can begin a conversation or listen to um, uh, both their uh, existing and clients and prospective clients uh, talk on the various social uh, medias and start engaging there and suggesting not just drop by our booth, but uh, you know, swing by our booth uh, to pick up you know, your uh, personal copy of um, a, a white paper that we've uh, just uh, put out um, um, or, or see our, um, our, our brand new um, widget um, you know, dis not only displayed but uh, see it run through its paces. Um, you know, we uh, are happy to have our engineers talk with you, um, even though the engineer may not be on the trade show floor. Um, you, the uh, reps can set up uh, easily, you know, Skype and uh, any other sorts of uh, communications for uh, for FaceTime. Um, so it it 
is um, in, engaging. You want to have your trade show uh, booth engaging uh, with the different elements of, um, of media um, for your um, um, existing audience as well as the virtual audience that may not have been able to attend the show. So you, by utilizing social media, can increase your, your reach and your, uh, your messaging. Uh, to a much broader audience, um, and um, ultimately, the the bigger the audience that are listening to what you have to say, uh, you will be seen as the um, the the company, uh, the one with the knowledge, the uh, the thought leader, uh, which is what you want, and uh, then you, know, you will have uh, a greater following, and uh, that translates into uh, the know, like, and trust that are so important to uh, conduct business. Um, but enough about me, Melanie. I <laughs> no, that's I great, Mark. That was, that was wonderful. And one thing I did want to add, and I totally agree with you about creating your own hashtag. Um, that's great. But when you're at an event, you definitely want to be monitoring the hashtag that, of the event because each of those people that are, are you know, um, tweeting about it, using that hashtag, you can be engaging with. You can be engaging real time with and get them over to your booth. Um, I like the idea of a white paper. I think you know content marketing is really, really important, both online and offline. And it might be something. I think a white paper is definitely, uh, you know, hugely effective online. For an offline event, I'm wondering if it could be something more along the lines of, you know, an actionable, you know, kind of. Um, I'm kind of thinking of like a checklist or something like that. I'm thinking of you know a nicely branded, you know, PDF document that could be printed off. And or it could even be even something else. Uh, it could be a little ebook or something like that. Something that has um, some more perceived value of physically giving it out. You know. Excellent. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, loaded onto a USB, so it would be a value add uh, to a, uh, a giveaway. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And if you were going to do the white paper, I would definitely. And that's where you could actually do it. That's where it makes sense. Come by and pick up. Um, you know, free USB stick with, um, you know, this white paper called XYZ loaded on it, plus this, you know, handy little checklist or this, you know, whatever list of, you know, whatever it is that you do. So everybody's mm -hmm. going to be a little different. For me, it might be, you know, the 21 things you need to do to have a killer LinkedIn profile, right? Um, Excellent. Yes, have an engaging title and then, of course, have the... Uh have the quality content to, to match the uh, the engagement of the title. Yeah, I like that. And actually, that USB stick might be less expensive than actually printing out those documents. In this day and age, it probably would be, and uh, they're very easy to come by. And uh, everyone likes to walk away with with something. But if you can make a giveaway memorable and useful, and uh, as much as a go-to. Uh, again, with the messaging and the branding on the side of the USB for the the business or the company represented, and the the quality information, be it their their digital catalog uh, that's on the USB or the, the white paper, or um, you know some valuable information that people can walk uh, away from and continually engage in uh, at home um, on their laptop as they're traveling home, you know, going back to the office. Uh, it's it's a constant reminder of, of the company and um, the importance they place on education um, and making individuals aware of their products and services and ultimately how that product and service can make the um, the individual or company's life you know easier better you know make more money all of that are are things that we as humans want and that's why we look and engage for information both online and offline at, at trade shows or events do you do you agree oh totally absolutely and I love what you mentioned about you know if you've got a catalog or something like that include that on that USB stick so you know you're giving them what what you promised with the valuable resources, why not go ahead and throw in some of your promotional um, material in there, whether it's a brochure or a catalog or a you know, service outline or whatever that is. Um, I think that that's a great idea to do as well. Because, you know, at the end of the day, people don't mind advertising if they are getting some valuable information. You know, um, newspapers do it, uh, ad advertorials, I think they're called. And uh, d depending on the subject matter, you, can't, you don't mind um, a, a company taking the, the credit for providing the information as long as it's valuable information to you. And again, it just adds uh, more credibility 
you know, to that company as being a thought leader, you know, someone that's recognized as an industry leader. Um, and uh, there's a lot of competition for, for eyeballs and, and for uh, uh, business out there. So, you know, take advantage. And um, these don't have to be costly things at all, do they, Melanie? No, they don't. Absolutely not. And, you know, one of the other things that I wanted to, to bring up, Mark, was, you know, at these events, uh, you know, it's obviously a great idea to do some kind of a giveaway or some kind of a contest. Uh, to get people engaged in coming to your booth, and obviously the more desirable the prize for the contest, the more people <laughs> you'll get involved. Uh, but one of the things I would consider doing is using mobile marketing for that. So get a text, uh, you know, a text code where they have to pull out their iPhone or their Android or whatever phone they use, text a certain number, and when they get the response, the auto automated response that comes from that, you can then gather their name and their email address as well as part of that contest uh, you know, giveaway. And then you can then follow up with a lot of those people after the event. I like that. I like that. And I'm so glad you brought that up because, uh, and you would know these statistics better than I, but a huge number of, of people are uh, on their smartphones. Um, and that's a wonderful way to engage, especially when you are at an event because people are still looking at their phones and getting information. So why not, as an exhibitor, be pushing information that way? You could even tell them that that's how you'll let them know who the winner is. You know, you could send that out via text, um, via text message. Perfect. Um, it occurs to me that uh, I will be putting some uh, resources together, and I'll talk to you maybe after the, the call, and we can put a few resources together that uh, that I know of and, and that you've had experience with that might give um, our listeners uh, a helping hand uh, in their research if they're looking for companies that could uh, help with uh, some of the different platforms or the different uh, apps um, that they will, um, you know, be, be hearing about today on the call. Would that be, uh, would that be uh, okay? Yeah, Melanie? absolutely, of course. Okay, that's great. Um, I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned uh, about um, mobile because um, that's uh, that's huge. And, and uh, do you see that uh, increasing or decreasing as time goes by? I, I definitely see it increasing. Um, you know, a lot of people just haven't effectively, you know, leveraged it, and so you know, definitely hasn't been overused, which is good mm -hmm. news. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know, when things get overused, sometimes they uh, start to lack um, some effectiveness. So, uh, you know, I think it's, you know, it's definitely here to stay, and uh, it's an effective means of communication. Uh, you know, it's one of the, I mean, if you look at your website stats and see how many people are coming from mobile traffic nowadays, it's, it's, it's crazy. And so, you know, a responsive website's really important, too, making sure that your website adjusts to the screen of different mobile devices. That's a very good point, and that brings me to something else, um, that at the end of the day, all activities, in my humble estimation, should be driving eyeballs, interest, um, and engagement back to a company uh, website and blog. Would, would that be uh, correct, in your opinion, Melanie? Absolutely. You know, one of the things, years ago, I remember when you know people started really getting into social media, and, and there was all these people coming out of the woodwork that were, you know, putting up a sign saying that they were a social media consultant or whatever. And there was people actually telling um, business owners and, and entrepreneurs that, you know, you don't need a website. Just have a Facebook page. I'm like, oh, that has got to be the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. <laughs> and think, you know, uh, I certainly hope not very many people took that advice because today you know that you can't even get engagement on your Facebook page or, or get it shown in the news feed unless you're paying for ads. So mm -hmm. if that's what you did to save money, you ended up it ended up costing you a tremendous amount of money. Uh, mm -hmm. The other thing is, you know, you want you want to drive traffic to the online assets that you own, and the number one online asset that you own is your website and your blog, and they should be you know one of the same. They should all be on the same site. Um, and then the other asset that you own is your email list. So you need to be using that website effectively to build that email list. So having a desirable opt-in, like that white paper that we talked about or something else, that's very interesting and appealing and valuable to your target audience, enough that they're willing to give up their name and email address. Those are two things that you own and control. You know, at any day, any of the social media tools could go away. And so if you build too much around that without having the ability to control those, some of those assets, then you, you know, you're really at the liberty of these, these things. 
So when we use social media as a company here at Top Dog Social Media for ourselves and for our clients, we're always using it as, you know, dr using social media to drive traffic to our websites which increases our search rankings in Google because Google says, hey, more traffic it must be a better site, more page views because they're visiting multiple pages because they're liking the content, it must be a good site. Oh, look, lots of people are sharing this on social media, lots of social shares, must be a good site, ranks it higher. The number one referral source for my website is Google, and I'm a social media company. You know, and we get a lot of traffic through Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and all the different social media sites out there. But because we do such a good job with our blogging, we get amazing organic search results. So people who don't even know of us, never even heard of us, are finding us every single day mm -hmm. in Google searches. Well, and I encourage them to uh, just to Google your name or uh, type in topdogsocialmedia.com because uh, your, your blog is uh, pr pretty much a, a weekly go-to for me just to keep current on... Uh, the um, the amount of uh, prolific information you give out for free, uh, and um, there's just uh, so much uh, valuable content, and, and I just want to thank you so much for for sharing and all the work you do, Melanie. Well, you know, Mark, I want to share a quick story about how why I agreed to do this interview with you, um, because I think it's really important, and you know, it's one of the things that most people don't realize. Social media is probably one of the greatest examples, uh, using it properly and effectively, of the law of reciprocity. So when you start sharing other people's content, engaging with people's content, doing stuff like that, you get on their radar. You know, people know, you know, you know the, the people that you're sharing their stuff, they know, they see it. And, you know, when you do this self, you know, absolutely self-servingly, where you have no there, there is no self-serving, you know, motive behind it, is except for share good content. People know that too, and they want to reciprocate. So when you ask for a favor, they're much more likely to do that. Whether it's share your message or share a blog post or or whatever that is, people are much more likely to do that. And Mark, you know, you are an avid, avid sharer of my content, and I see that every single week. And so when you ask me to do something for you, there is only one answer that I could give. Right? I'm like, how mm. can I not? So a great example of you know, leveraging and building relationships with you know, influencers and other people in your industry that you could you know, basically leverage for some, some other, other ways of promoting your business, whether it's sharing you know, good content or whatever it is, asking for a favor. Or, you know, and the other thing, too, is on LinkedIn and on Facebook, well, and, and actually on Twitter, you can do searches to find people that are located in a specific geographic region. So if you're going to a city and you're doing a trade show or an event in that city that's not maybe your local city, you can pull up on any of these social media sites, you know, who are the people that you're connected to in New York City, for example, or in Vancouver, or in Toronto, or wherever the event is. And you can start to connect with those people. You can send them messages and say, hey, you know, I'm not sure if you're aware of this event, uh, that I'm going to be attending that's called, you know, XYZ event, whatever. If you're going to be around, you know, definitely let's make a point to, uh, to meet in person because we've never had the chance to meet in person or something like that. You know, so great opportunity to just kind of open a door with, with some potential prospects, strategic alliance partners, referral partners, people like that. Great, uh, great tip, and, and uh, I'm really glad you brought that up because you're right, with social media, it is very easy. Uh, to use uh, on the multiple platforms to find out um, where, where people are and, and where they're going because people are sharing information and uh, to be um, uh, you know gracious uh, and uh, just like walking into a, a room full of people you know don't barge in but uh, just make yourself uh, known quietly uh, to to a group and um, in turn yes that uh, reciprocity does go both ways, and uh, I think you know, the business owners that know and understand and practice that um, will we'll see a, a huge return and have already in in the um, uh, the, the business and the, the valuable uh, contacts that uh, that they have both in their own industry and in complementary industries and in you know non competing industries, and uh, it's just a matter sometimes of uh, being a little creative as to uh, how to reach out uh, in a genuine fashion. 
um, and um, not to want to put words in Melanie's mouth because she's the expert, but I, I believe that's what um, you know you're you're saying in all your communications is is, is be genuine. And um, you know you will attract those same type of people back to you. And uh, you know if you have if you help enough people find what they want, uh, you in turn you know will will get what it is that you want many times over. I absolutely, I totally agree with that, Mark. Um, just a, a couple of things um, that I wanted to touch on too. What has been your experience um, with um, putting up small vignettes or company messages on on YouTube and incorporating some of those? Uh, more active, um, um, you know, platform elements into uh, into a corporate blog. Does that does that work? Is that positive? Is that beneficial? Absolutely. I think you know, social media presents a great opportunity to do some storytelling and uh, you know, creating some. Did you see that video last year by WestJet where they did um, you know that Christmas promotion? It's probably my favorite video that was marketing video in the last year, and of course they don't all have to be marketing videos, but what's that, uh, I think it was in Calgary and in Hamilton, Ontario, they uh, had a Santa at the airport asking every single person that was boarding a certain like, a flight from Hamilton to Calgary what they wanted for Christmas, and every single passenger, every single passenger told them what they wanted. Some said I wanted socks and underwear, some said I wanted 60 and 6 screen TV, they all had different, you know, different things that they said. By the time they arrived in Calgary, WestJet had gone out shopping about every single person exactly what they wanted, gift wrapped it, put their name on it, and it came out on the, the luggage cart. You know, that video went crazy viral. It was an amazing campaign. Cost them nothing more than the, the cost of those presents and, you know, some of you who recorded the video. Probably one of the least expensive campaigns ever that generated the most, you know, activity. So, yeah, share a story, share messages. Uh, you can get customer, you know, testimonials and stuff like that. Those are great. Um, you know, you can then use those videos, not just on YouTube, but also on your blog post. And you can upload them on Facebook. I mean, there's so many different things and ways to, to um, you know, repurpose your content. So, Good point. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really important for companies to tell their story. Like, what's your why message? It's like, you know, with anything that we do in life, if we don't have a big enough why, we don't do anything. Right? Mm -hmm. And so everybody's interested in knowing the why. So when I talk about LinkedIn profiles, for example, I always talk about, you know, starting off with a paragraph in your summary that talks about you, who you are, why you do what you do, what do you do, you know, who do you serve. And so I think that's really important because it's the only thing that really can differentiate you. Mm -hmm. You can have a billion competitors out there, but the only thing that makes you even the least bit different, aside of maybe having, you know, UFP and having some, you know, proprietary stuff, is your message, your why message? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why is it important? That's a very good point, and actually, one of my first go-to pages on any website is the about us. Um, I want to get the cold notes version on you know what the company is, uh, and and hopefully they. Uh, and the really good ones are very transparent, and you'll often see you know pictures of the employees with a, a little bit about. Uh, um, you know, each of the employees, and it, and it gives you a feeling of these are really warm and caring people um, that are going to help me, you know, make this purchase and, uh, you know, make my life better. Um, in the interest of time, I know we've got to wrap it up. I know you've got another engagement shortly. Um, any, uh, any kind of closing uh, messages or thoughts or, or summaries that you'd like to uh, leave with the listeners for now? Yeah, you know, one of the big things I think, and I see this all the time every time somebody's, you know, putting on an event or, gosh, every single political election, <laughs> every politician is feverishly contacting me one month before launch, uh, one month before election day or, you know, one month before launch of their book or one month before launch of their product or their event or whatever it is. And, you know, these things take a while to build up, and, you know, eventually you get to a point where, you know, momentum kicks in, and you don't have to do nearly as much work as you had to do previously, but they still take time and, and, and work, and so, you know, if you're wanting to promote something that's happening a month from now, you know, really you want to be starting months and months in advance, okay, and remember with your posts, keep them, keep them, um, keep the promotional posts very, um, the word I'm looking for here, Mark. Uh, low key? <laughs> yeah, but limited, limited. You know, so educational based posts, informa information posts, you know, stuff like that. And of course, you know, do a promotional one here and there. But here's the thing, you know, a lot of times, 
um, you know, if you're doing too much commercial stuff, you're going to turn people off. They're going to phase it out. They're not going to listen anymore. So, you know, build up these assets um, and, you know, leverage them. Drive, you know, use social media to drive traffic to your website and the, the assets that you own. If you're not building an email list, make sure you start because that's something that you can leverage for every event prior to the event. Drive a lot more traffic to it. So start building those things up and, you know, leveraging, um, you know, the different things that are available to you within LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, to be able to find, you know, who are the people that you're connected to already within the areas that you're traveling to or doing events within. And Great information. Great information, Melanie. Thank you so much. Um, before we go, uh, how can people get a hold of you? Yeah, I've got two websites. My first primary one is topdogsocialmedia.com. Uh, my second one is the LinkedIn code for my book, uh, which I just launched uh, earlier this year. Excellent. Well, I certainly would encourage anyone to check that out because I know that uh, my my following uh, um, Melanie's wisdom has just done wonders for me and uh, the business that I'm in, and uh, so there's my uh, brief testimonial uh, for you, Melanie. Um, th thanks so much again uh, for all your information and wisdom and uh, for continuing to care and, and put out. Um, Thanks for spending time with us here today and, and sharing your social media tips and tools and strategies for, for making uh, people's uh, next events a huge success. Uh, I certainly uh, urge you all to follow her social media wisdom closely um, because, again, speaking from personal experience, it's certainly done wonders for me. And uh, we all look forward to hearing your success stories as you put into practice what you've learned here today. Uh, in closing, my name is Mark Huber. On behalf of Melanie, Dadarl, and myself, we wish you all the very best of continued success. Goodbye for now.